Hi, hello, welcome and welcome back to yet another episode on your favorite Little's Law YouTube channel. So to, uh, in our previous video, we saw about the very basic set of metrics that we can add in the dashboard. And also we see uh, how to create a dashboard in Dynatrace and we have added some of the uh, metrics as well like the logs and then we have added the uh, CPU usage and then the memory consumption and then we even added uh, the uh, uh, collection time the GC collection time and then we also saw about the GC time percentage and what is the difference or what is the correlation between the increase in the memory and the decrease in the um, GC collection time as well. So uh, if you haven't watched the video, please do watch our previous video. And in this video, we are going to see some more metrics because as we all know, uh, if you are using Dynatrace in your project, so you must know what are the metrics that you should use to understand or to find the performance bottleneck. So this is going to be very useful if you're someone who is using Dynatrace or if you are uh, attending any interviews on Dynatrace. So please make sure you are watching this video fully and also you are, uh, make sure you are practicing it as well because that will help you to um, get a gain a lot of knowledge on directories and performance testing and the performance testing metrics because some of the times you might get questions on the performance testing metrics as well uh, so coming uh, before we move on to this video this is me asan shanmugam i welcome you all to our little star youtube channel please don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't subscribed yet and please do like the video if you really uh, find it is useful for you and then um, share the video with your friends and uh, yeah so with that i come to this video and last the last video we saw about uh, how to create the metrics based on our account but before that uh, there are a few i mean i would say the default uh, metrics uh, in terms of dynatory so those are here for example let me just change this to the last two hours So now, uh, if you see here, uh, the very basic are uh, the default metrics are the top HTTP request. So we all know what is top HTTP request. So these are the uh, maximum number of uh, requests that's been sent or how many requests that's been sent from your server, uh, from your machine to the server. And uh, just to give you a walkthrough on the very first um, record. So here you, you can see the service name EKS. EC trade and EC trade offer service and uh, the HTTP uh, request method is a get method and uh, the HTTP spans which says 8778 so that means so the HTTP S spans so what does it mean so that represents the individual request response cycle so you're sending a request and you're getting back the response in a distributed tracing system so this number shows how many requests were traced or logged for this service which means you have successfully sent 8778 here requests and then you have received response for that so that is what the http spans tells about so which means which which actually means that you have sent 8778 hits to the server and this has been done in eks which basically is a Amazon EKS, which is a AWS managed Kubernetes service, like what we have for uh, Amazon Kubernetes service. We have EKS, which is Amazon's uh, managed Kubernetes service, and that is hosted on Amazon uh, services. So same way, you can also see, so since we have uh, collected the top HTTP requests, you can also see several other requests, like most of them are get requests, and the top four are get requests, and the fifth one is the post request which is part of the EC trade application. And then we have got another micro block controller, which again is another post request. So this way we are, we can, or we can find the top HTTP requests during up the last one hour of execution. And the second metric is, let me expand it. So in the second metric, you can see how many errors do we get? So for example, if I, so this, this is actually the whole graph, the bar graph setup. And if you want to see a one particular metric, for example, the errors, so just go and click on top of the errors and you can find there are like no errors and nothing is highlighted. And if you go to the info, so you can see here like there were an, uh, there's an average of like around 7,000 to 8,000 um, information messages for the last one hour during your, in your application, basically. And then coming to none, so there are like no uh, harmful messages or nothing. Uh, 
uh, harmful for this message but still they were messages from your server or in the application and then there are a little of warning which you can see on the top of your application so this actually gives you an idea of uh, how does your application works so uh, what does this particular graph exactly tells you about so as we can see there were like four different events so in direct trace when we see graphs with error info none and one so this actually this graph uh, typically refers to the log levels uh, or we can take it as like event severity levels in the system because these levels actually help categorize and prioritize the significance of logs or events being captured uh, for example uh, the error the first one that we saw here right so there so that error actually represents the logs or events that indicate any critical failures or any malfunctions in your applications or service and these errors need immediate attention so here there were like no errors but still if there are any errors they need to be immediately at, uh, attended or they need immediate attention as they might directly impact the functionality such as applications so your application might get crashed or you could see a lot of failed transactions or unhandled exceptions because this one is what uh, you see a lot if there are any issues in the application and you should definitely have this log or severity level graph in your dynatrace because uh, like i told you um, they tell you or these errors their log tells you that you need immediate attention to the application because they directly impact the functionality for example it can be like the application crashes or any failed transactions or any unhandled exceptions and the second one uh, which is the warning so warning indicates any potential issues that are not critical but it could lead to problem so that that's uh, that's a one level below the error because they say that okay there could be some issue but for now it's not critical but it can lead to any problem if it is not been addressed so just you you see that there are some warnings that doesn't mean that you have to like leave it as it is and then these warning logs uh, might point to things like performance degradation suboptimal configurations or situations that require caution but they are not immediately harmful and then you have the information so all, as you all know the information logs or events provide gen, general operational details about the system or application because these are not errors but useful data about routine events like for example it could be a service startup or it could be a request processing and other activities that help monitor normal operations and then uh, the last one which is the none so this none represents logs or events that don't fall into any particular severity category or there are no any uh, specific severity level which was assigned so in some cases uh, none means that there were no issues or there are no logs generated at that specific time so what does this response in the graph or what does it represent in the graph so the graph which you are seeing uh, likely shows the number of percentage of log messages or events which are categorized by this weird level like uh, the error the info or the warning or none basically there if there are no errors so uh, the error spikes uh, might correlate so if you are seeing a lot of errors uh, during your testing so this is what you have to watch during your testing um, and if you see that uh, there are like a lot of that there are like a lot of error spikes um, you can correlate that with the issue with the application while higher information and high number of warning might simply provide some operational insights but errors yes you have to take care of it and then monitoring these levels in dynatrace will help us to identify any critical issues for example if you find any spikes in errors for example like most of us uh, might see some uh, spikes but we do not know what to do so these are the symptoms that there is an issue with the application and you have to track the anomalies or potential concerns for example for any rise in warnings and also you have to monitor the routine system behavior that is the info level logs so overall uh, let me give you uh, a quick uh, information so errors will show that your services are breaking down or facing major issues and warning helps you to identify things to fix before they escalate so warnings are something that tells you that okay there is going to something going to happen so please be aware of it and error is something like that's broke please take care of it and then information helps you to observe general observation observe operational data and none suggest that uh, 
there is nothing. So it, it, it says that there is nothing to worry about and there are no any severe events logged. So now I think I might have given a lot of information, but yeah, please make sure you're watching this uh, graphs, the log levels, and please make sure that you are, if you're watching something in terms of errors, please to make sure that you are into it. And then the uh, chart top 10 host by CPU usage. So let me just open, maximize it. And here you can see the, uh, so for example, like if I, I want to see what is happening or what is the percentage of uh, this particular, uh, or how much CPU does it take? So you can, when you just highlight or hover over it, you can see that it has taken like 100%, 100% of uh, the CPU. And then the next one, which is taking an, an average of around like 80 percentage. And then there is another host that is occupying like around average of 30 percentage. And same way, you can see a different um, amount of uh, CPU usage by your host. Um, so as we see, uh, there are like several hosts that's been uh, displayed in this chart. So what exactly is host is uh, these are the physical or the virtual machines, mainly the servers which are running uh, your applications or services. So Dynatrace collects the CPU metrics from each host and that's what is being displayed here. So it's not just one machine, it's just different machines and their uh, uh, usage is being displayed here and uh, so when i say the cpu usage this chart or whatever you see in this graph this shows the uh, percentage of cpu that's been used by the host at a given time uh, which is like for the last uh, two hours so when i just refresh it yep it's for the last two hours and high cpu usage indicates that the host is under heavy load for example this particular host that's one on the top is uh, under heavy load and it might lead to performance degradation if it becomes too high. So it's already too high. It's like almost an average of 99.99 percentage overall overall percentage. And if you see here, this is around like 83. So it, it is going towards the high uh, CPU utilization percentage, but still uh, the one that's on the top is al already almost 99 percentage. So that's the, uh, uh, it's, it's a, uh, an indication that something is wrong in terms of the CPU usage. And then we have another graph, another chart, which, which basically has um, no labels, so we can skip it out. So yeah, uh, just to give you a quick recap. So we have uh, discussed about what are all the top HTTP requests that has to be added or that has to be displayed in your performance testing dashboard and then we also saw about the log level so how important is that and what are all the different log levels that you have like we have errors we have info we have warnings and then we have none so they have to be clearly monitored so that you can uh, very well understand for any performance bottlenecks and also you can also even watch out for any issues with the applications and then we saw about the different uh, uh, hosts with their CPU usage. So with that I come to an end and in our next video we'll see more metrics uh, which we can add uh, in the Dynatrace dashboard. So until I meet you in our uh, another interesting video, it's bye bye from Ascension. Recommend your favorite little slide YouTube channel. Take care and bye bye.